though we've reached the point. Gerda has awakened and is just tearing the place apart, but Clive has got other things on his mind. Where did he go? The dominant that he believes he's been chasing has appeared before him and is just keeping the distance. Now he's trying to get there, but Garuda keeps getting in the way here, and we're going to end up having to fight her. Settle this matter. But it's weird, like, it, Clive ran forward, it's like, I gotta stop her. And like, the, the, like, solid snake voice, he's got, I forgot to stop her. But he's immediately distracted by his own goals, because it's been his, it's been his mission since he broke away from whoever the hell it was he was fighting for. <laughs> that, like, oh. I gotta get this dominant of fire that killed my brother. Of course, not realizing that he is the other dominant of fire. And his brother is probably not even dead. But he's seeing somebody here that... I guess the person we're chasing after, after is just sort of like a visual representation of the three. It's sort of like a human form that I guess is just appearing in Clive's mind here. Hmm. You called me! Why? is chasing after the other dominant and he's determined to get there and do that so he's even sort of trying to like asking like where is he where's the other dominant but the fact is that Garuda will not be denied and Garuda is determined to cause death and destruction so Clive is essentially caught up in this fight against her now this fight kind of displays the sort of enormous power disparity between a dominant and pretty much everybody else in the world. We had seen her, or Benedicta, sort of half transform before and have her giant wings, and she was like an overwhelming force before, like picking Clive up and throwing him around and all that kind of stuff. If, I mean, I would say overwhelming if not for the fact that she lost that fight. But it was clearly demonstrating how powerful she was. But transforming into this monster here, she is gigantic and not for the fact that it's a video game. This would seem like something that was just impossible to overcome. Now we're going to go and we're going to smack her and then hit her and, and dodge her attacks and all that kind of stuff. But as the battle sort of drags on, we'll see more and more that this fighting in a sort of human form against something like this, solo especially, is just a damn near impossibility. And just like the battles that we had seen in the beginning of the game where Titan and Shiva were fighting, there were these two, well, I don't know, I couldn't tell how big Shiva was, but Titan was definitely gigantic. And both of them were tearing up the environment, casting these enormous, powerful spells, and just anybody who got caught in the way was just destroyed. And it's an example that these, these icons are just beings of enormous power, and it's obvious why they were so prized for their military 
like military value back during the beginning of the game when we saw that sort of um, that sort of negotiation meeting there when the guy who oh god I can't remember his name but the guy who turns into Titan that big fella they, they had mentioned they're like oh well you have your own dominant but he hasn't taken the field yet and that sort of motivated him to go out there he's like I'm gonna go and I'm gonna I'm gonna rip these iron bloods apart and you know what? He had the damn power to do it. If not for the fact that the Iron Bloods had Shiva, he just would have crushed everyone. Now, in comparison, Garuda does come across as a little bit of an underwhelming boss. Because, like, she should have... Like, why couldn't she just fly up in the air a little bit and just destroy this platform that Clive is on? Of course, it's video game logic, so what you see in a cutscene and what you see in actual gameplay, there may be a little bit of disparity there. I mean, in general, we accept that kind of thing. But it, uh, getting into this actual fight, at least for the moment, Garuda seems like a little bit of a disappointment. But, you know, we'll see in a few seconds how that's not really the case. I do wonder how this is supposed to work mechanically, like... Clive steals some power, and he says, like, he could feel Garuda inside of him, but we're fighting Garuda now, so is it just that he took some of Garuda's power, or that this is just a manifestation of Garuda, and he has a separate manifestation inside of him? I have not encountered a point where you could turn into Garuda, so, like, I don't know if if he just doesn't have power to the same capability. 